For hundreds of great shows like this one, go to onnetworks.com. Play Value is brought to you by Xbox Live Marketplace. When the home video game market crashed, the bottom just fell out. The next day, it was gone. But the arcades kind of died off a little bit at a time, very slowly. The arcade represents sort of the, the beginning of what we know as modern video gaming. It's a very special place, right? And so when you're talking about the arcade, we have to be clear about what we're talking about. When you're talking about arcades, you have to break it up into three separate areas. One, an arcade is a venue, a place that you go and play games. The second element is the actual hardware, right? It's the coin-op games. And number three is the style of gaming that arcades invented. Very short form, very intense for a very short period of time. It's worth thinking about the arcade in terms of those three different aspects, venue, hardware, and then content, because they all went in very different paths. Now the venue, that was your traditional video game arcade, the place with the dozens of games, all the kids, and some creepy guy with a crotch-mounted coin changer. In the heyday of arcades in 1982, there's something like 24,000 all across the country. Today, present time, there's only about 3,000. They just start disappearing until the numbers keep whittling down and whittling down and whittling down. So the venue is basically extinct in America. But overseas didn't necessarily experience the same fate. In Japan, for example, a country which is much smaller than here, they still have about 10,000 arcades. Our video game market crashed here, but it never did in Japan. And after a few years, they looked back and they said, what are we doing right here? What are some of our biggest titles we can send over there? Now, during these fallow years, the way the arcade business stayed alive was in Japan, they'd make a pretty cool game. Then they'd import it to America, where it would do pretty well, and get ported to home systems, where it would also do pretty well. Stuff like Virtua Fighter and Tekken. The biggest hit of these import arcade titles was Dance Dance Revolution, and it's just a totally new type of game where you play with your feet and your entire body really instead of just your hands. Here you have a game where you dance to the rhythm and it gives everyone around you something to look at. Even when you're not playing, it's fun to watch other people play. When someone's good at Dance Dance Revolution, it's a spectacle. It's at the front of every arcade because it draws a crowd. When was the last time a game would draw a crowd? The last game that I remember that would actually draw a crowd was Mortal Kombat. You know, people would sit around and watch and wait for the fatalities. It's been six years since an arcade game drew a crowd. DDR's here, and DDR's doing just that. Even though it's an experience that wasn't available at home at first, they released it for the consoles, and there's just a wide variety. You can spend anything from 20 to hundreds of dollars on your own Dance Dance Revolution pads to bring the arcade experience home. Now with the hardware, once home consoles could duplicate the arcade experience, the arcades had to come up with something you couldn't do in your house, so they went with immersion, with virtual reality, gigantic screens, motion-controlled seating, all these immersive things that you just couldn't fit into your living room. R360 from Sega is uh, this machine that you strap in and it's like a flight simulator and, it, and that it rolls and spins and you actually go upside down while you're playing. Psycraft which is a virtual reality motion simulator game by Sega, is one of those games that you strap yourself in and the thing whips you around. I mean, you're really inside of the game. And this is, again, something you can't get at home. All right, so another one, and this is sort of like the IMAX of video games, is the House of the Dead special attraction, which you, you actually go in and you participate in an experience moving around the mansion and blasting the hell out of zombies. You know, these types of games are actually moving into the realm of the theme park. The idea of doing something you can't do at home is what makes games so appealing in the first place. And it's the reason games like Big Buck Hunter are big in the city where you can't actually go hunting. It's crazy, but it's another one of the games that's getting people out and getting people still spending their money on coin-op machines. Every rule has an exception, and Golden Tea is the exception to every single rule. It was produced in America. It's very realistic, kind of slow. There's no joystick. It's just a ball that you roll, and it became the biggest hit in arcades ever. Now about $350 million a year gets pumped into these machines. Since it started in 1989, that's like two and a half billion dollars making Golden Tee the highest grossing arcade game of all time. The thing that all these big games have in common, like Big Buck Hunter and Golden Tee, is that they 
uh, reach beyond the normal alien forces thing that's usually in video games to something a little more casual. You know, people that golf, uh, people that enjoy regular sports and not ones with robots. And it really puts them on this other level of reach and profitability. Now the other way the hardware changed was to go even simpler into casual, easy to play games. Now where are you where you have a lot of quarters that want to fall out of your pocket? You're at a bar and you're drinking. For the most part, these are mega touch touchscreen devices and the games are directed toward adults. Um, these are like memory games, card games, uh, quiz games. These are games that are more cerebral than reflex oriented. Now you don't really think about Mega Touch, it's just kind of sitting there in the corner of whatever sleazy bar you're in, but there are 100,000 of these things out there in the wild. That's how many Pac-Man machines they had at their height. There's something you can sit back, have a beer, put a couple quarters in. This form of casual gaming was another way that games evolved. And that brings us to number three, our third aspect of the arcade industry, that arcade-style gameplay. Arcades are responsible for creating short-form games, and artistically, it's formed its own genre of games. Because the arcade number crunchers figured out that you needed to put a quarter in every three minutes for the machine to stay profitable. So they had to come up with stuff that was quick hit fun, easy to learn, hard to master, a short burst of excitement, really intense strategy, competition, and reflexes. When the home consoles came, and people weren't restricted by the quarters they could put in, game designers could start exploring a little further. They could start making longer games, long stories, long adventures with role-playing elements. One's not necessarily better or worse than the other. They're both very fun, um, both have many classics. They don't have to really compete, but they are different experiences. Now the biggest casualty of the original arcade downturn was actually the short form genre of gameplay. There was really no room left for these short quick hit games and they kind of disappeared for a while. The short form games, I mean, Granted, they're not in the mainstream anymore, but there's always been a taste for these games, and you're starting to see them come back more and more these days. Handheld is a great medium for short form gaming. You know, you're gonna play something that is fun, quick. I'm on a subway, I'm playing, done. You know, on the Nintendo DS, uh, you're seeing some interesting games. I remember a game called Nano Stray, just a fun, you know, top down shooter. It brought me back to the days of playing like Life Force and, you know, the Gradius series, and I'm just thinking, man, it's so easy and elegant and exciting to play. You just don't want to stop. Ironically, as gaming has gotten more mainstream and more non-traditional gamers get into it, these short form games are making a comeback right in your living room. With Nintendo Wii and Xbox Live Arcade, people are taking these quick hit games and putting them right there in the family room and they're having fun with the kids, with mom, with dad, with Uncle Charlie. We're coming back to a point where people have had enough of the 40, 60, 80 hour games and they want something intense and fun that I don't have to worry about saving and developing a character and buying and selling. No, they want to go in, play, and get out. If there's one indicator that the arcade style game is coming back, it's the fact that people talk about score again. Everyone's obsessed with their high score, and honestly, people just didn't give a crap about it for like 15 years. So while the big arcades themselves may never be coming back, that arcade style gaming is still around, and that's the important part. Rated E10 plus the T. Play the games everyone wants to play. For hundreds of great shows like this one, go to onnetworks.com.